What's up guys, Anton here at DPR. Today we're covering which rack is best, Freedom Breeder, ARS, or Vision. If you're ready, let's jump right into that. So we're gonna start off our review with the actual um, hard plastic racks. The ones that I'm talking about is all for the similar size of tub here. Um, this is the V70. The V70 is basically a rack um, with vision tubs, something like this here. Um, they don't have, they don't come with a cup holder. So we use those uh, PVC tubes to actually um, hold the water cups. So basically those are the racks um, with the V70 tubs. And what I think is great about those racks, it's a very good entry level rack. Uh, it's still expensive, but they're not as expensive as the ARS or the Freedom Breeder. Um, and they will last you forever. The resistance of those racks are great. These racks at NBK Reptiles Facility, they're literally over 15 years old and they're still full of snakes. We're breeding in them and they do work absolutely fine. There's actually a lot of people that will build racks similar to this. I'm not gonna name anyone um, other than Reptile Industries because these are Reptile Industries racks. When it comes to the cons for those racks, I would say that it's really like, they're just a big thing. You can't remove a row, they're a complete setup. Um, and if you build them in here in your room and they just can't come out of the room, it's the, it's the case here at NBK Reptiles, um, those racks are bigger than the door. So if ever we wanted to move them, if we were moving the breeding, we'd have to disassemble them and move them to the door and rebuild them. One thing that I don't like about those racks, um, they're heated with a heat cable at the back. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see that, uh, but there's those three lines um, and we have a metal tape on top and the heat cable, there's basically grooves in the plastic. The heat cable goes in there. Let's say for any reason the, the heat cable uh, breaks or a rat comes in and chews one of the connections at, at, on the outside, to remove that, you'll have to remove all of the bins and go go in, remove the metal tape, remove the heat cable, transfer. It is such a pain in the butt, guys. You have no, you only have an idea if you've done it before. We did it plenty of times, and it's really, really annoying. Um, so this is one thing that I don't like about those racks. If you have to change your uh, heat cables, it's a really, really big problem. Let's say you wanna add on some extra levels with those racks. This is not a thing that you can do. You have to plan in advance um, whether you're gonna have high racks, low racks for your ceiling. Um, so this is not a thing that you can really move. Um, I guess you could just sit a rack on top, but this is not ideal by far, not ideal. Um, so let's say you have those racks here, you have a very high ceiling, you move to a new facility, ceiling is lower, those racks don't fit, well then they're not of any use now. So this is kind of a problem and when it comes to selling those racks after you've used them, they drop in value a lot more quicker than the Freedom Reader or the Air Rest. Often the bottom bins will be a little harder to actually uh, pull out just, just because of the weight of the entire rack. It's not on the metal frame that's going to keep it solid all the way from top to the bottom. Um, there's a lot of weight going on and since it's plastic, some of them are going to bend over a little bit and make uh, the bottom bins much more difficult to actually pull out. That's another thing that we've noticed by using those racks for a long, long time. And to finish off, I think that visually, these are not necessarily the most attractive rack to work with. Um, ours have a turn yellow with time. Um, we use old Zoomed um, UVB bulbs. Uh, we, we flip the bulbs quite often, but we've used in the past old Zoomed UVB bulbs. Um, and because of the UVB, they turned pretty yellow. Uh, it would happen a little bit to those other Freedom Breeder or ARS, but this is another thing. So visually, they're not the most appealing racks, but other than that, um, they're an extremely good, affordable way to get some professional racks in your collection. So moving on to the ARS, um, this model here is the 5540 Hybrid. Um, it's not the same size of bin as the uh, V70 from Vision, basically the rack we just covered, or the 103070 from uh, Freedom Breeder, but we're gonna still take it as the same approach for a adult ball python. So disregarding the fact that there's four bins instead of three in the same frame size, um, it would be the same thing with three bins. Uh, it's more about the rack itself than the actual tub. So when it comes to this rack, um, I feel like 
Those are extremely easy and no-brainer to assemble. Uh, the instruction manual is great. Uh, I've built two in the past and just great racks for that. Easy to build. The finished look is actually really, really good. It looks super clean, much cleaner than the actual plastic, the hard plastic racks. Um, these look extremely professional. Those racks are extremely easy to move. They are on super huge wheels and it makes that you can move your racks. Let me, I say this, sir. you can move your racks very easily in your room. They pop out just like nothing. So you can do that fairly easily. Uh, it looks quite difficult, but I would uh, highly, uh, I would, just give me a second guys. I'm gonna place this rack back, okay. So those racks are extremely easy to move. That's great. Um, but other than that, if you wanna move out, uh, you can basically just pop out the top. And here you'll take an entire row out and they're super easy to uh, move whenever you have to. On these racks, the heating system is much easier to replace if ever you have a problem with it. You basically slide all the bins out of um, your row and you'll have a basically a metal um, insert where you have a heat panel the miner always insulated, but you have a heat panel at the back there. And these basically, if it doesn't work, you just remove it, buy another one, replace that, and you're gonna be good to go. It really just take like 20 minutes to do, and it's not gonna be a long time. Whether with the uh, plastic racks, it's probably gonna take you three days to do the entire process. So that's really a upgrade from uh, the other one to this one. One of the great things also is that, uh, let's say here we have a super high ceiling. I wanna add in other row, it's super easy. I just basically buy the other row and stack it on top here. It's gonna fit right in and I'm gonna be able to uh, add additional rows all the way up to 29 uh, feet if I want to. Coming with the cons of these racks, um, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but sometimes in my room, especially if it's feeding day, I will have some bins that are moved a little bit forward like this. This is my system. It's really a, not necessarily the best system, but this is my system to tell me that I have a rodent in there. Um, I've used this way for a long time and it always worked great for me. But one thing is that by moving this, you create a little bit of a space where the actual rodent can come in and chew on the metal there. And those racks will actually rust underneath um, with those little chews and not just the chews actually I've had some a couple of, of uh, other breeders that I know that were telling me that some of their ARS racks were actually um, being like started to be a little rusty underneath and this was kind of an issue. I feel like after a while these racks uh, will get a little harder to slide. Um, mine have not been that much of a problem but I've been to other facilities where um, for some reason the racks were a little harder to slide after a bit of time. Um, I still have some that are a little, like a little harder. This one is like definitely harder. You know, then it stops kind of there and it's harder. And you know, this one's pretty easy, but some will have a little bit of that after a bit of time. I don't know if it's just uh, a problem with this one, but I've seen this with other people, other breeders were telling me the same thing. When it comes to the actual tub, and this is gonna be our transition between ARS to Freedom Breeder, uh, I'm gonna open two here. And you're gonna notice one thing is that in the ARS tub, the actual water bowl is completely in front of the bin. And one thing that I prefer about ARS here is that um, whenever your snake wants to go and, and uh, bowl wrap in order to cool themselves down, let's say, let's take this female here. She's not very big, she's not breeder size yet, but you know, she could come and cool herself down. It's not necessarily the ideal placement of the water bowl. If it was moved there, it kind of creates a separation in the tub and bulk pythons are extremely uh, stressed animals. Having those safe spaces is actually a better way uh, for them to just be in the rack, in the bin. So having that uh, water cup more in front is not necessarily ideal for that bowl wrapping, that cold seeking. Uh, I feel that um, with Freedom Breeder, with a cup more in the middle, you have all this area here that the female can actually come and she doesn't necessarily have to bowl wrap. I, I see that a lot of my females are just sitting in this area here where we don't have that with ARS. Since we're still here talking about those two racks, um, Freedom Breeder tubs are actually made out of plastic that's more um, soft than the actual ARS. This one has a little bit of give. If you look here, like 
you can actually move the plastic a little bit where the ARS is a much more solid plastic. Um, to me, this one, if you were to drop it, this one would be less likely to break contrary to that ARS bin. And from my experience now, uh, I feel that those bins, the Freedom Breeder bins are much easier to clean than the actual ARS. Moving on to the Freedom Breeder racks. This model here is basically the 103070. This is uh, three bins in the same frame uh, of the rack. Um, I'm using here the Proline series. Basically the Proline series is just uh, that the clips here are made of plastic and uh, there's a plastic insert in the middle. Instead of all being welded, uh, there's just like a little insert that you assemble with rivets. So this is mainly the difference between the actual uh, original rack and the Proline. I have to say that the Proline are actually uh, fairly cheaper than the actual original one. Uh, and they're really doing the same thing. It's just that uh, most of the middle parts are made of plastic. I use them. I actually love the Freedom Breeder uh, model. The Pro lines are great. One thing I have to say though, I used to have those little magnets uh, to put my snake ID, but on the Pro lines, they don't stick. Uh, that's because of that plastic insert. I guess that if I was just to buy the metal clips, it would actually work, but that, that's one thing I have to change. Um, what I love about this rack is actually this feature here. Those plastic inserts can just pop out just like this and you can remove the top like that. It makes it super easy to come in and clean that and not just clean the whole tub, you can actually clean that entire thing. With a uh, plastic rack or in ARS, the way you'll have to go is just shove your hand in there and just try to clean the entire rack but those bins are so deep that sometimes it's very hard to go and clean that entire thing this makes it super easy and they're just super easy to slide back in and uh, fix it see that is super duper easy same way as ARS, these racks will pop out easy. You can add another row. Uh, that's really the same thing. It's the pros of actually metal racks. You can stack them infinitely. Another thing that I really love about those racks is the metal shelves in the middle here. This is actually for me a real game changer because whenever I'm cleaning my room, I can actually just take a bin, drop it here, and do my routine and whatever. So I, I can have my cart with me and put my substrate in there and just clean my, my stuff, have the bin right there, and this helps my workflow like crazy. This is really game changer. I think I've heard that ARS was actually gonna add this um, to their arsenal. Really good thing, your smart move for them. Right now, I still think that it's only Freedom Breeder that has that. It's a great, great tool for your workflow. And it's all about this, guys. This is I think you're gonna clean your rack so often, it's really once a week, you wanna have something that's easy to work. If you have any difficulties, might not seem like a big deal for one time, but if it is for 52 times a year, it can really be problematic if it's something that's really annoying and those metal shelves are just such a great tool. As we are still here, I wanted to talk about those water cups. I feel like all of the actual ARS water cup are really good because they actually um, are really close to that 16 ounces. Uh, but this one, there's a little gap there and there's always water coming at the bottom of it. And no matter what I'm doing, there's always water there. Um, I've seen in the video that they were actually going to change this and make like a little lip that's gonna come right underneath and resolve that problem. So far, I haven't had the opportunity to get those bins, but right now, all of my Freedom Breeder bins, there's that little bit of water there. And if there's uh, cocoa husk going in there, it gets pretty dirty. Um, so I have to go and clean that weekly. Kind of annoying, but other than that, the bin itself is the best bin of all. Um, I really love that. 
cup and more in the middle. Where I'm a little 50-50 on the actual Freedom Breeder, personally I love it, but I think that some people might prefer the ARS look, mostly because these look more like a finished product. Uh, the actual Freedom Breeder, you'll see here, you have like the inserts in the middle that are very visible, where in the ARS you actually don't really see them because they're all the way back there. So these will have a smoother look as a finish. Um, and those like, with the, the pro lines, you have the little rivets that are there. So this feels more like an industrial type of rack. It's not as clean as the ARS. Personally, I prefer the look of this one just because, I don't know, I like the stainless steel more than the other metal that they're using. Um, but other than that, I think that ARS has uh, come up with a more finished look product. Another great thing about those racks, I'm gonna pop this out again, just so you can see. Um, there is some, holes that are pre-drilled uh, in there and this will allow you if ever you want to move um, from a three bins to a four bins in the same row you have the possibility of doing so uh, this is a great thing it's a great idea from freedom reader realistically it's kind of a pain in the butt to change those uh, middle dividers but you definitely can do that uh, so it's just one frame for two different type of racks so this is a bonus that they actually made so guys, that's pretty much it for my um, rack review. Um, realistically, I think my favorite one has to be the Freedom Reader. I love the little things that they're doing extra to me. They're just game changer. The metal shelves, uh, the possibility of cleaning the top. These two things are just too great to uh, overlook, in my opinion. If I had to start over, I would only get this one. Um, but I understand that the actual uh, plastic racks and the RS are just great racks as well. I've used all of them. And uh, I, it's just now that I'm saying that I prefer Freedom Reader. But other than that, all the other racks are great. Um, let me know down in the comments, guys, what do you think of each racks? Which one are you using and which one is your preferred rack? And on this, guys, we have other videos. Uh, but before, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. I've never seen Facebook, but you can follow us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. Mostly Instagram, YouTube and check out a morph market for available animals we have other videos on the channel cheers and see you